Hello, so I watched a documentary um, from 2015 and it's uh, called The Secret World of Lewis Carroll, a BBC documentary presented by Martha Kearney. Um, it was an interesting documentary about one of our most famous writers um, and I think it's fair to say Lewis Carroll was probably one of the most prominent celebrities of the 19th century, although um, apparently he was something of an introvert. Um, which is also true of Charles Darwin, incidentally. Um, but this documentary opens up some interesting questions about the character of Lewis Carroll and a more ne negative side of his legacy, which is questions that have been raised in recent years about whether or not Lewis Carroll, author of Alice in Wonderland, was in fact a paedophile. Um, so the documentary goes through, and I'm going to have a few spoilers here, the documentary goes through his relationship with the Vidal family, particularly Alice Vidal, the youngest daughter, who is widely thought to have been the inspiration for Alice in Wonderland. And the story goes that Lewis Carroll and a friend um, brought these uh, young girls on a boating trip along the Thames in Oxfordshire in 1863, and the young girls badgered Carol to tell them a story and out of that came Alice in Wonderland which she subsequently gave to her as a present. Um, apparently Alice Little was quite a headstrong little girl, she was quite, um, her character very much reflected the character of Alice in, in the books. Um, that's, Lewis Carroll had an influence on children's literature is without question. Um, I mean, he. I think he is the archetype, really, of nonsense literature. And um, I mean, here in Sunderland, there is a local Lewis Carroll connection. I I don't know if it was that he'd visited Sunderland. I'm not exactly sure what the connection is, but um, there's a bronze statue of a walrus in Mowbray Park here, which is a connected to Lewis Carroll's literature. Anyway. Um, the first thing we need to consider in asking this question, was Lewis Carroll a paedophile by definition, is to what extent is the difference in standards of the mid-Victorian era, how, how much is that a factor in determining whether we consider him a paedophile or not? Well, certainly by today's standards, he definitely would be very close to that description. Now, there is no actual evidence that he ever molested a child. There is no evidence that he ever had any sexual relations with a child. But certainly um, there are some very dubious things that we do know. It is known that throughout his life, um, he died in 1898, which coincidentally is the same year C.S. Lewis was born. Um, throughout his life, he was very close to young children, especially young girls. Now, he's not the only famous writer um, to have had this. Mark Twain apparently was close to young women as opposed to young girls, teenage girls, which, unless I'm mistaken, he called a starfish. And at the time, people thought he was just a lonely old man trying to recapture his youth. In the case of Lewis Carroll, um, there's something interesting that happened. Uh, he was close to the Liddell family in Oxford. Uh, Henry Liddell was a prominent local clergyman. Um, Lewis Carroll, of course, was a deacon, but he never took up a parish. Um, and at one point, although he was close to this family, he had a diary um, record. And at one point, the correspondence was just cut off. And there's no reference to the Liddells in, I believe it was the closing months of eighteen. Well, it wouldn't be in 1865, that was the year Alice in Wonderland was published. I'm not sure exactly which year, but sometime around then, the correspondence was totally cut off. And there is speculation that the mother had intervened and something had happened. Carol himself writes a diary entry in which she went to a party, a social function, and he kept his distance from the little children. And it makes you wonder, had something happened around that time? Um, one thing for sure, the Victorians did have different standards when it came to children. I mean, 
what today we would consider inappropriate, the Victorian saw as quite standard artistic um, aesthetics. I mean, Lewis Carroll wasn't the uh, only prominent Victorian to capture the child in a nude pose. Uh, his contemporary, Julia Margaret Cameron, also photographed naked children. Although I would suggest that her pictures were a lot less suggestive. Um, Carl had one picture of Alice Little, which was definitely, by today's standards, questionable, because it shows her in a rather suggestive pose. But there's one that towards the end of the documentary emerged, and it's now held in Marseille. Apparently it cannot leave France. Um, and it's not 100% proven that this is a work by Lewis Carl. It's a photograph of Lorena Little, an older sister, when she was a young teenager, and it is disturbing to say the least. It's a full frontal nude photograph. The young woman in it, she's really a young teenager, not a very young child, probably to take a guess somewhere around 13, 14, um, but clearly she looks uncomfortable, which sets it out from the other pictures that Carol took. Now, the analysis that they show using forensics, using the sort of information that was available about the camera that Carl used, they established that, well, the analyst suggested that it certainly corresponds with the time period. Um, the girl in the picture almost certainly is Lorena Little. And so the conclusion was it almost certainly is uh, work by Lewis Carroll. Now, if that is true, it's very difficult to say that is anything other than a predatory image. We'll never know if Lewis Carroll ever molested children, but the picture itself should, should certainly ring alarm bells. And I think that um, might explain why there was that abrupt halt in the relationship between him and the little family, whom he had been very close to. Uh, apparently, Carl used to befriend children throughout his life, but this wasn't like, you know, some creep hanging about back alleys. This was apparently in broad daylight, you know, when their governesses, when their parents were around. But like I say, Victorians had a different standard. So what the, the child knew to the Victorian was just aesthetic work of art, whereas we would blatantly see it as um, inappropriate. One of the people they interviewed was the columnist Will Self, and it was put to him, well, Carl defenders would say, but that was just, um, Carl was just looking for the um, ideal aesthetic, which was a young female child, because it was pure innocence. But Will Self made the good point, that's precisely why paedophiles go for young children, because they are innocent. Um, so, I think even allowing for the context of the time, the fact that the Vidal family cut Carol off shows that even his contemporary thought there was something a little bit off about the way he was going about this. So then we come to the question, well, okay, let's say he was a paedophile. Does this impact his legacy? I'm not sure. Um, I don't think it changes the merit of his work. I think it doesn't change the fact that he was a great creative um, writer. I don't think it changes the value of Alice in Wonderland as a literature. Um, I don't think it may. I, I don't think there's going to be any change in terms of, you know, I don't think it's suddenly going to affect the sales of Alice in Wonderland and other related works. I think it's going to be one of those things that are going to be in print for a very, very long time. You know, it's a stable of British literature, and I don't think that's going to change. Just like. Um, other great Victorian offers. But it does remind us that people can have two sides. There are many great figures who are good at one thing. They're, they're seen as a very um, important figure in, in a particular genre or a particular art form. But it doesn't mean that they're necessarily a great person. So we could conclude Lewis Carroll was a great creative writer. He had a great imagination and he has entertained children and adults alike for 150 years and has had a profound influence on literature. But 
he was um, an adult man who had very inappropriate relations with young children. Um, we'll never know if he acted on it. We'll never know if he ever went from having an interest in young girls to actually physically acting on it. I think the Lorena Little picture, um, I find it unsettling. I find it very disturbing because this is a young girl who clearly looks uneasy in the picture. I'll put a link to the documentary that, that you make your own mind up. Um, let me know your thoughts. If he was a paedophile, should that change the literary merit of the Wonderland stories? I don't know. I think we can find many great figures in music, in the arts, in politics, you name it, who have a darker side. It doesn't necessarily change. You know, having a negative side doesn't necessarily change your skill. Well, it doesn't. I don't think they're necessarily related subjects. Um, but it does mean that human beings are complex. And what was interesting about the documentary, Martha Kearney was a big fan of Lewis Carroll and uh, she sort of opened up the question, will this change the thinking of Lewis Carroll fans? Certainly, I think a lot of people would be disappointed. They would be, it would almost like ruin their childhood in a sense. But I don't think this is that new. I think there's always been questions around Lewis Carroll. Even his contemporaries, obviously from this documentary, were not completely gullible. They, even his Victorian contemporaries, and like I said, the Victorians had a different attitude to the child aesthetic. I mean, today, um, for example, let's look at contemporary child beauty contests. Most people, myself included, consider them highly inappropriate. I personally think they should be banned. Uh, I think they're completely perverse. You know, dressing little girls up like adult women, I think that's just plain wrong. Let children be children. Um, now, the Victorians, they had the memento mori sort of pictures where you'd have dead children pose for days. Um, the Victorians certainly had a very different standard as to what we would today consider very strange. On the other hand, um, they weren't a world apart from us. Um, you know, we're not talking ancient history here. So let me know your thoughts. I'll put a link to the documentary. It's a very interesting documentary. My personal feeling is um, he definitely had certain inappropriate... Um, if the Liddell picture, the Lorena Liddell picture is authentic, i.e. it was definitely taken by Lewis Carroll, that doesn't present him in a very good light. It presents him in a predatory light. And that's definitely a negative side to the man. On the other hand, I don't think it changes the fact that Alice in Wonderland is a great work of literature. It, um, and it will remain so. Okay, let me know your thoughts.